Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Welcome to the weekly gardening vlog. I am going to go ahead and kind of give you a bit of a tour of the garden. I had planned to do a bunch of stuff in the garden this weekend, but I actually didn't really have a weekend. I had to go to work and just kind of, it just didn't happen. So I didn't get a whole lot done, but there have been a lot of changes in the garden. I figured I'd kind of update you. So we're going to start out on the deck up here and we're going to start with our green stock planter. I know a lot of people rave about these things and that's why I have them but I've not been having good luck with it at all. Like it does not water <laughs> as evidenced by this one that is completely dead. <laughs> Nothing ended up sprouting there um, despite keeping it watered and watering it all the time. And it, it, it kind of just gets clogged in there. I found like the whole thing will seem to be basically empty. And so I'll water it, but then it all just flushes out the bottom. Like the inside cavities are already full, but there's not dispensing. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong with it, but it's just not working. So I need to figure it out. I followed all the directions. It's got good uh, soil that is, it's just potting soil. I use like actual, like just some organic potting soil and that's all I used in there. So it should work, um, but just, I'm blowing my socks off. <laughs> These peppers are doing fine, probably because they kind of thrive in uh, drought kind of conditions. And then, what on earth is on here? Something's trying to lay a cocoon. I need to get that off there because I don't know what it is. The basil is actually doing okay up here. I don't know if I'm supposed to pluck these off of here. I think I am. I'll probably do that. But see, it's just not, not doing great. It's just not, not watering like at all. I have to come through and remember to water each and every single one of these. So I don't know what's going on. I'm not blown away. Anyways, and then these peas over here are beans. These I need to move along that fence over there. I'm gonna do something with them. But uh, I'm not doing that great at watering them, so they're kind of dying. Those ones totally my fault. Uh, but this one, like it's supposed to work, but it's not. And then these ones. If you guys remember these, I had transplanted these beans and they were doing fantastic, just fine. And then I transplanted them and a lot of them died. So I decided to find the replant and the replantings are doing great. And then some of the transplants are doing okay. Some have obviously died. So I just did that with this whole thing. So they're gonna grow up and around this arch trellis and that's that's where they're gonna be you can kind of see a theme especially with the stuff up here on the porch and they kind of just look sad because they're in the pots and i need to remember to water them more often the issue that i've been having with watering these is that i have to water them so stinking often i don't remember and our well it sucks it's terrible and i can't really use it to water the garden so i've been having to do let me show you real quick you can see up there, we have these water catchments. We have these two really huge containers. Uh, my husband's sleeping in that room, so I don't wanna go too far up there. So we're just gonna do this from far. Um, but these barrels over here, I've just been literally this entire garden, I have watered by hand with, um, with the watering cans, just dipping them in there and carrying them all the way down the hill to wherever they're needed in the whole garden and it's a really big garden so some of the areas have definitely taken priority over others and the ones in the pot up there i have that rain barrel up there that i've been catching rain but it emptied out so i have a total game changer and i'm super excited about it what i had i found something called a utility pump and i just put the pump down inside of there this whole time i kind of had it in my mind that i needed to get the water run down the hill just by gravity and it never even really occurred to me that i could use a pump so i went to uh trader joe I'm not so i went to tractor supply and i spoke with the people there and they directed me towards a utility pump that is just the most amazing thing ever um, I kind of went in there with some questions and stuff and asked them, is this even an option? I wanted to be able to hook up a pump to water catchment system and be able to hook it up to a hose with a nozzle as well as be able to hook it up to um, irrigation lines and be able to do drip irrigation. And they said this pump would do both. So $119 later, it was the best $119 I've ever spent in my life. <laughs> and I can just, I literally just hook up a hose to it 
and run it down and I can water the whole garden that way. And it has just been a game changer. I did that like three days ago and the first day I got it, I watered the entire garden with an actual hose. Honestly, like it was the best night of my life. <laughs> Not literally, but it definitely was a game changer for me and I'm super duper stoked about it. So this first row here, you can see, we just have a bunch of various different kinds of kales and collards and it is just starting to explode with growth a couple of them a little bit too much growth we got a couple of them bolting but not a whole lot of them they just seem to be doing really well and this this bed is a little bit more shaded than the other one so which is why i picked it we're starting to get a little bit of bug damage a little bit of aphids i think are hiding in there yeah hide, aphids hiding in there and some of these ones are just doing great. And these are like unusual kind of varieties, like something called a marrow stem. And I can't remember what this one is, but they are delicious and they're just really neat looking in their growth pattern. So, and then the loofah is finally doing really well. It's taken off, it's growing up here. You know, we got a couple of various sizes. And then this one is a tomato that I planted in there and have kind of just let go wild for some weird reason, not sure why, but we'll see how it goes. I'll probably end up trimming it up at some point. And this bed over here is a little more packed than the other one. So the kale is not taking off quite as much because we still have rutabagas and turnips in here that I need to harvest. I don't know if you can see that in there, but it's doing pretty okay. Let's see if I can find, oh, that one's big and beefy. Need to get that one today probably. But over here we have some different kinds we have these are where the aphids are i need to get these soon and then just something's eating all these leaves i'm not sure what but these are turnips what is that is that a bug i think that is some kind of bug i don't know what that is i'm sure it's not good but, um, so we have some dinosaur kale, and mostly like turnips and rutabagas, a little bit of Swiss chard, um, but that's about it. And then over here we have another tomato that I've let kind of just sprawl and go wild in here. And the beans are just taking us on the trellis here. All the lettuce that was here has since been gone. And then these... Uh, lettuces are going nuts and these have since gone to seed they did not last through, through the weather <laughs> but everything else over here in my land in my cabbage landia is doing fantastic these ones are even starting to really head like it's a pretty good size solid head on quite a few of them so i'm really really excited about that and this one here is just, this has been my favorite since the start. I mean, look at the size of these leaves. Huge. I can't, it doesn't even come through on camera how big these things are, but they are gargantuan. And some of them are struggling more than others with some kind of pest or disease. I'm not sure what that is. If you guys know what that is, let me know. In case you couldn't tell, I'm super new to this. So, then... Yeah, these are just all doing great. I've come through every once in a while and kind of trimmed up some of the the leaves on like this one. Like I would have no problem cutting this up and eating it. I would just kind of cut around some of the damaged parts if it's really bad. But if it's not super bad, like I would probably just rinse it off maybe. <laughs> all right, so we have, so I don't know if you remember, but this uh, this is kind of what I had believed this whole time was broccoli and cauliflower turns out just this is broccoli <laughs> i don't know where the cauliflower went to but i don't think i have any but upon closer inspection i have come to discover that it is actually brussels sprouts <laughs> i don't know if it comes through on camera but you can see the little nubs starting to grow which i'm so unbelievably excited about like i would much rather have brussels sprouts than broccoli at least for growing, like I'm for eating, I like both. Eating, honestly, I probably like broccoli more, but I think growing is a little more impressive with the with the Brussels sprouts. Moving along here, this is kind of the row that I had planted a bunch of bush beans in between the tomatoes. Total bad idea, 
don't do that. Um, but it's still doing okay. I went through last week and kind of trimmed up the bases. There's not a whole lot on the bottom here from the tomatoes. It's mostly just beans on the bottom. But these bush beans just grew so much taller than I expected a bush bean to be. Like this is kind of what I anticipated a bush bean to be, but instead we have this. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, we're just kind of dealing with that as as we as we can. And then yeah, just seems to be doing pretty okay. And picking off the you can see we got some fruit setting. This one is the best. This one, what was it? It was an Abe Lincoln. I mean, we got some big ones under here. Quite a few fruit set on here. So, um, and then I think that the peas on the other side here, I think they were the main victim of that huge heat wave that we had last week. A lot of them are just really starting to to look pretty darn dead. And I did come through a few days after the heat and I got a huge harvest of green beans, or peas, sorry, huge. So, and then I'm just doing my, my evening gardening walk. So this is kind of what I do every evening. I just kind of cover up the starts that are small enough to need to be covered. Like these ones here are too big, so I'm not covering them anymore, but I just haven't gotten rid of the, um, the cups yet, but it's not gonna need to be covered. They're big enough. They can do their own thing. But some of them, some of these peas really have just taken off and they're exploding with growth. But most of them, I'm probably going to yank this coming weekend. I had planned on yanking them this past weekend, but we'll get a little more life out of them. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But so some of these are just humongous. And really putting out some major, major suckers here, but got a lot of fruit setting, which I'm so excited about. And our potatoes are doing great as well. These are zucchini and picantes. I think only two of them are small enough to need to cover, or even able to cover, really. You'll have to excuse my bit of a shortness of breath today. My asthma has just gone kind of nuts today, a little bit haywire. So I'm just trying to keep up here. But um, over here we have our um, cherry tomatoes. The other day, our, we have really had almost no pollinators at all around here. So as evidenced by our um, squash down there. I've had to, to uh, pollinate, hand pollinate almost all of them. But this morning, good sign of improvement. I did see a few bees down there. So hopefully they finally discovered my garden and they're going to come. But for the most part, if they don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with all my melons. Got a bunch more tomatoes. I mean, these tomatoes are just absolutely unbelievable. But again the pollination i'm getting some flowers dropping because like i know that bees aren't typical for pollinating these but and i've sort of come through and just been kind of tapping them and flicking them trying to get them to pollinate self-pollinate but i think i would still just have i think i would still just have a lot more peace if i could see more bees around you know what i'm saying all right you can see over here all of the peppers these are really starting to take off. They really responded to the watering that I gave them the other day. You can see these are Guanamalata. I don't know how to pronounce it, but um, got a few on here. This one's kind of bunched up. And these ones are just, you know, they're doing really, really great considering they were dug up by some weird animal and replanted by me. Um, like four times, four or five times. I don't remember exactly how many, but a lot. And then the Armenian yard long, they're finally starting to really take hold on this trellis. I'm so excited. And these ones on the opposite side, they did start out smaller, but these things are really struggling big time. So. Yeah. This one here is a sweetie cherry tomato, you can see. Got bunches and bunches of fruit 
set here. So, so exciting. This one here, I think, I'm pretty sure that this is just, oops, sorry if you got the microwave or the microphone there. But you can see here, we got all these little bumps. It almost looks like a bunch of little warts. And my, my thought is that it's just heat damage with the extreme heat that we had over the last weekend, um, because that is when it appeared. But if you guys know that this is something else, could you let me know? All right. And then over here, we have this. It is a, it's like an African spinach kind of. I think it's called, it was Bite Kuteku. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. But um, that's something that my husband got from somebody at work a few years ago, and he's just kind of been planting it. it. Tastes just like spinach. Doesn't really look like it, but it tastes just like it, and it acts like spinach. And then these ones are some overflow tomatoes on the stakes here that my husband planted where we had originally planted uh, potato seeds, not seed potatoes, but potato actual, like the little teeny tiny seeds. And that he collected from the flowers. Once they flowered and set fruit, he collected them, but it didn't do very well. But we do have a few that kind of took off and we left them there. We'll see how they do. But these are the seed potatoes and the fingerling potatoes doing great. And then you can definitely tell a difference in variety. These ones are like the Amish paste tomatoes and they're huge and really tall. And then just all of a sudden, when you get to the different kinds, it gets shorter. <laughs> These ones are San Marzano. And then some just called like just Roma tomato, just a generic one. And then, yeah, these are Romas. Yeah, but they're setting fruit though. And this one, uh, Martinos. It's cool. They look like a, like a, um, just a weird shape. So, and then these ones, I still need to put the trellis up. I was going to do that this weekend until I get called into work and couldn't do it. So. And this is my husband's, it's a Carolina Reaper. I don't know if you can get a grasp of how many fruit are on this, but there's got to be at least 20 fruit that's ripe plus probably another 30. This is its third year. My husband's been nurturing this plant, bringing it inside all winter, overwintering it, bringing it back out, and he's getting a payday today. And then over here, we just have our little, um, uh, these are summer squash that I planted just a variety. And we have this one over here that I unfortunately forgot to take the lid off of today. Gosh darn it. It's the only one in the section that is still left. So hopefully it'll be okay. <clears throat> I did that a while back to these two and they're fine and then you can see all of our tomatoes are just about and some have already reached the trellis so I need to come through and trim these up and uh, get rid of all the suckers and stuff like that but I'll do that this weekend and over here oh my gosh so much so much growth I can't even believe it we have so everything that is not over in that corner all of these this entire row with the exception of those two all of these here all of these over here down here these all were replanted and they are just taking off like crazy but so this one down here is more winter squash sprawlers just kind of big squash Here's winter squash as well, but it's more um, the smaller variety. And then over here, summer squash. Holy smokes. Whoa, that thing got huge overnight. These are, I want to say these are Ron de Nice ones. I get them mixed up, but they're just exploding with growth. These are where I saw the uh, bees this morning. This is like a... Uh, uh, eight ball variety and then we have a gray zucchini need to harvest that one probably tonight heck why don't I just grab it right now look at that guy yeah put that in my pocket and then this one is a gray is a yellow crookneck only one of them survived 
I believe I have more heart planted over there. And then we have just a yellow style zucchini. Black beauty. This one is the winner, winner chicken dinner. Holy smokes. This is the Costa Romanesco. This thing is gargantuan. I can't even, like... It just keeps going. And there's three on here. I'm getting like every dinner every night off of this one plant. And then over here, we just have our melon and cucumber uh, arched trellis tunnel. <laughs> doing great, these things. Most of them are doing really well. You can see it's even got a female flower on it. And some of them are not doing so good. It's a melon, a little bit. You can see in the Squashlandia all of the various little uh, female flowers in there, or female starts. But yeah, things are just doing great overall. A couple of them. It's been a really big challenge to keep these things out of here. They keep wanting to come in. And I keep having to redirect them. You should have thought this through, obviously. But so far, I've had pretty good luck of keeping them out and redirecting them. And yes, I do see those. I'm going to come back for them. <laughs> so I'm going to come through here in a minute when we're all done. And I'm going to put the cup, cap, cups on these. One thing that most people probably don't think of. I certainly did not think of was all the spiders that like to accumulate in these tunnels. Ugh. And we're going down there. So down here we have our miniature zinnias. They're not actually, they just turned out to be miniature sized. Um, and the back there we have nasturtiums. I never ended up planting anything there. It's kind of been taken over. I need to do something about it. But so this is all just various types of zinnias. And then here, I can't remember what's here, yarrow? Yeah, yarrow. And a couple of sunflowers sprouted. These are all supposed to be sunflowers. They're just not doing a good job of sprouting. And with some bush beans in between. Those are all beans. And then we got our tomatoes planted. I have kind of done a passive job at kind of tending to these. I need to actually trellis them up. Um, I've just been afraid to kind of stunt their growth or make them grow in weird ways. So I'll probably do it when they get a little bit bigger. And then right here we have African Daisy, Gloriosa Daisy. These ones haven't actually flowered yet, but these African Daisies have started since the start, since the beginning. And then, hmm. then here we have Calendula interplanted with some bush beans and nasturtiums along the back there and these things are just going to be beautiful i hope they actually flower a decent sized flower those were basil oh they started to come back i thought they were about eaten and then here we have more calendula bushes more tomatoes these things are just doing fantastic bush beans interplanted african daisies I gotta come here sometime in the morning so you can actually see them flowering because they kind of just they kind of just like shrivel up at nighttime. More tomatoes. These are all just like so you can see I kind of started to, to trellis them up and ended up stopping because it was just annoying at the time. <laughs> so I stopped. Alright, and more calendula, bush beans, we got some pole beans growing up the back here, and some bachelor boys. That bachelor button, whatever they're called, pinks and blues. And that's about it. And in case you're wondering, the blackberries are a common. This is just one tiny little section. I mean, we got it goes all the way up to the house. Wow. I thought about coming through here and kind of weed whacking it, and then I was like, well, I mean, weed whacking it enough to be able to get in between the fence in here, but then I'm like. Why don't I just take down the fence? <laughs> so I may be ending up tearing down this fence because there's nothing it was to kind of keep the deer at bay. Um, but I mean, where are the deer going to go? 
<laughs> like it's all just bush. So I may end up taking it down, but it also, I think it serves as a purpose of keeping the bunny out too. I'm not entirely sure. The bunny's a lot kind of down by the road a ways away, but I haven't really seen many here. But yeah, you can even see we have some salmon berries back there. I don't know if you can see the little orange but salmon berries and blackberries here. So I hope that you guys enjoyed touring the garden with me. It is July 6th here. We are in zone 8A or B, depending on how, how the hills roll. And we had a last frost date expected of April 1st, but it actually ended up being a couple weeks prior. And we are, I'm a super new gardener. This is like my second year having like a legitimate garden. Before we did like some container gardening, but mostly my husband did it because I just, always got busy with work <laughs> and last year the same thing my almost my entire garden produced almost nothing and I had a lot planted but it got taken down by blight because I was just working too much and I couldn't keep up with the garden um, so a lot of it just got taken down and I think I harvested maybe five pounds worth of tomatoes <laughs> and I had almost as many tomato plants but I'm keeping up on it this year and and um this year, hopefully, if I do end up getting behind, my husband's gonna be able to step in and he's gonna be able to kind of take over the day, the weeks or the days, spiders everywhere, uh, the weeks or the days that I'm not able to keep up with it. He is we kind of talked about it ahead of time. And uh, last year, he kind of just let me have my fun in the garden and he didn't realize I'd gotten so backed up and I didn't ask for help. So that's kind of why that ended up happening. So we did talk about it ahead of time. And if he sees me kind of working a lot, he'll be stepping into the garden and, uh, taken over a lot of the stuff and then um, I can also ask for help if he doesn't notice so hopefully this year we will have a fantastic garden so um, I hope you enjoyed this tour and if there's anything else that you guys wanted to see or if you have any ideas or things that you see uh, that would kind of help me along in the garden please let me know in the comment section below I would love to hear from you guys and uh, oh the asthma man is just whew, not doing good today Hold on, I need to breathe for a second. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next week for another garden tour. And then at some point, we will end up picking up other videos more in the kitchen with food preservation, fermenting, and all those sorts of things when I have the time. Once my summer schedule kind of clears up a little bit, we'll be doing a lot more of our other style videos. But for now, pretty much just doing weekend, uh, not weekend, but weekend gardening tours slash what I'm doing in the weekend, as well as uh, just, tours on Friday. So <laughs> until next week, thanks for watching. Bye.